Auto ethnography is an important, interesting, and a relatively new type of qualitative research. What is auto ethnography? Uh, why do researchers conduct auto ethnographies? And what is the process of auto ethnography? This is uh, these are the questions that we will respond to in this presentation. So, what is autoethnography? Well, autoethnography is uh, basically a qualitative research type, and the this particular type of research is aimed at recalling, reflecting on, analyzing, documenting, and reporting personal life experiences, with reference to how these experiences these personal experiences have been shaped by the wider social, cultural and political contexts. So the researchers are not just narrating or recalling those experiences, uh, but also they are actually presenting, analyzing those experiences with reference to the social, cultural conditions and situation and context in which those experiences have, uh, have taken place. So in other words, the ethnographer presents herself or himself as a case in order to give insights into wider social, cultural and political phenomena. The researcher thus becomes the center of an analysis of socio-cultural phenomena. In other words, the researcher presents um, his own, his or her own examples in order to identify and to analyze social phenomena in order for the reader to understand uh, that social or those social phenomena. Um, auto, the, the why of autoethnography or why is it that autoethnography is an important and useful type of research? Um, so generally ethnographic studies, um, so I'm actually talking about the general ethnographic studies. Those studies help in understanding socio-cultural phenomena mainly from the perspectives of members of a socio-cultural group. Um, Autoethnographies, uh, you can say, is a subtype of the, um, or a variety of the ethnographic studies where the, the focus is to provide a more nuanced understanding of the socio-cultural phenomena is the researcher's own experiences that are deemed to be more intellectually informed become the center of exploration and analysis. So generally in a general ethnographic study, uh, the experiences of a group of a social group are actually under the scrutiny or under analysis. But in autoethnography, uh, generally, this similar phenomena is actually explored through the personal, um, the personal experiences and understandings of the autoethnographer or the researcher. And because these type of experiences from the perspective of the researcher are more are generally deemed to be more intellectually informed because the researcher has those personal, those first-hand experiences, but also have the, uh, the scholastic or intellectual uh, understanding of, of social phenomena. And so, as a result, um, there is this expectation that a more nuanced understanding of the social phenomena is possible through autoethnographies. So, we can also say that autoethnographers are in a better position to have easier access to and deeper contextual understanding of 
the research data because the ethnographer the auto ethnographer uh, is himself or herself the center of the research or the source of data so they can easily collect data they can easily analyze that data with reference to the context their personal context and so this also makes um, auto ethnography a very useful uh, type of research that gives deeper insights to an interesting accounts of social phenomena through the personal experiences, perceptions, and understanding of the researchers. Now, autoethnography or the how of it. So, how is actually what is the process of autoethnographies? Well, uh, there is a good deal of variation and latitude in the process of autoethnography. So there is, uh, there is generally not a kind of, uh, uh, of one type of autoethnography. There are some subtypes of autoethnographies. Um, and uh, then uh, actually some of the autoethnographies focus on the self. Others or the culture have, have a cultural focus and some present a balance um, in terms of the analysis of data that, that is collected for um, autoethnography. In the self, as the very name suggests, uh, when the, uh, the, the focus of the autoethnography is, is the self, the story generally are, revolves around the personal experiences and generally they are more descriptive in nature. With a cultural focus, the personal experiences are also analyzed in terms of the cultural norms and values um, or the cultural structures in which the researchers' personal experiences have taken place. And the third one where there is a balance uh, in terms of uh, coming up with interpretation of the personal experience. So there is a balance of the personal experience versus their analysis in a social context. Then, so that's, that, that actually is the three different ways of conducting autoethnographies. The general process of autoethnography is actually begins with the selection of a topic or issue such as some aspect of the personal life or lived experience with socio-cultural implications. So the ethnographer selects uh, a particular aspect of their lives or a particular experience or experiences or a particular period or a particular professional, psychological or social or economic aspect of their lives, then they develop objectives or research questions related to those particular aspects of their lives and then they begin the data collection process. So generally the data is actually the data actually consists of the personal memories, the uh, possibly diaries, letters, emails. Um, similarly, the autoethnographers may conduct discussions with their peers or friends or relatives or colleagues. And interviews could also be used as data collection for the autoethnography as a research process and artifacts, etc. So generally, the data comes from the life and the life experiences, which can be in any form of the autoethnography researcher. This is then once the data is collected, then begins the process of data analysis. Although these are not distinct stages, these stages can overlap the, the data collection and analysis and even the setting of research objectives or questions. Um, they are quite, they might be quite overlapping. So the data begins with reading, 
memoing, writing and rewriting of, of the memories, which actually means that structuring and restructuring those, thematizing, bringing out the main theme, central themes in the story, critiquing that in the light of, uh, of the scholastic uh, theories or the, or the knowledge uh, of the researcher, refining these, uh, these drafts and then synthesizing, synthesizing the, the ideas and ultimately getting to conclusions which generally comes in the form of a narrative. That narrative is then uh, further polished and revised and finalized and ultimately we get a narrative report um, and so that report is something that comes as an outcome of the autoethnography um, as a research process. So to summarize, we can say that autoethnography is act it, it actually is a narrative form of qualitative type of research. The focus of the narrative is on understanding and presenting and analyzing a particular aspect of the life of the researcher themselves and that particular aspect or period is analyzed in the actually in the light of the socio-cultural situation in which um, the, in, in which that particular period um, has shaped has taken shape and then this is then presented in a kind of in the form of a narrative or story in order to help the readers get insight insights into the social phenomena on a broader level here are some suggested readings that you can refer to for further enhancing your understanding of the autoethnography